Welcome, welcome again to another edition of Louisiana Catalyst, the Link podcast show. I'm your host, co-host, uh, Vice President of Louisiana Catalyst, Duran Tatter, here with my right hand, our president and co-host, Mr. Quentin Derr. How's everybody doing? Doing good, man, doing good. And we're here, man, with the with the legend, uh, Mr. John McKinney, uh, President, Executive Director of Union Parish Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you letting me come and visit with you today. Yeah, yeah. No, it'd be always good to have the uh, the hometown here. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I was native son to Union Parish, born and raised there. School, Louisiana Tech, hit the career path, gone for 40 years, moved back. And I told people when I became president, I was in the catbird seat because I was native son, but nobody knew about any baggage that I could have had. <laughs> yeah, 40 years away from home. And then you come back. What did you see different? And what what did you see that you enjoyed or that you were pleased with? Well, I came back here from Houston. I lived here in Houston. I lived in Houston for 12 years, but I've lived all over the world. And uh, uh, 4 million people. I moved back to, you know, Falls got probably less than 4,000 population. They think a traffic jam is four cars at the red light. I can show them Katie in Houston has got 26 lines, you know, so that's the difference. Plus, it's like, it was really nice to come back home, I guess. You know, we always talk about it and hear it, but I had the opportunity to do it. Yeah, you're right. What did you, when you came back home, what did you see about the community that you were just glad to see? Well, coming from a kind of a worldly view, uh, I had to come and operate in 14 countries, so I didn't a bit broader view and I realized that um, Union Parish Fallville was kind of a island that they were not involved in activities throughout the state they were not recognized at being whether they're progressive you know um, and there's just wasn't a lot of dialogue going along going on within state officials and us um, and so I really made a concerted effort when I became president to expand our our boundaries, which I was accustomed to doing business. Um, and so I got more involved at the state level. I now sit on a couple of statewide boards, and uh, we uh, are being noticed for what we do. We've received several awards, uh, and I'm proudest of in 2020, we were named the uh, Chamber of the Year, the state of Louisiana. Wow. And I was like, wow. <laughs> so you were there compete against New Orleans and Baton Rouge and Shreveport and Monroe and this little rural parish. But during COVID, we did some really good things. But a lot of businesses and even chambers hopped down, let employees go, sent them home, cut their budgets back. We did. We continued business as usual. And we just changed our, the uh, uh, our focus to where we were helping businesses uh, acquire grants to basically to survive or hopefully uh, make it through, you know, this pandemic. And we actually grew. There were businesses that were moving to our area um, during this period of time. So we actually gained, I think, 41 new members wow. during the first year of COVID wow. where everybody else was gloom and doom and I'm smiling, you know. So, and I think that's what the evaluation committee was looking for, the community involvement of the chambers, and they selected us. So we're proud of that. Yeah, it was, it was great to see. Me and John have a, a unique history because I was serving as chairman for my second time and for the second time, the president resigns, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, did this guy? Yeah, I don't right. know, I'll never be chairman again because every time I'm chairman, some the president resigned. And so we started, you know, trying to figure out, okay, selection process, what, what are we looking for? And I knew, I was like, I want our focus to be economic development. Yeah. You know, civic stuff is great. Membership is necessary. But to really drive you know, economic development and drive jobs, that's what's going to grow the parish. In the chamber at the time, you know, you, you like most small chambers, you have one president, you're, you're struggling trying to figure out to do this or to do that, and you're limited on resources. Mm -hmm. And so we, we really had some progressive presidents before that 
started some new initiatives and some funding mechanisms that allowed us to get our own building. So we kind of were starting to get some momentum. And so interviewing John, I was like, this this is the guy that I need and I'm going to work directly with. We got some initiatives now coming with Louisiana Delta Community College and Workforce Development. He's been in that seat. He's going to be good in these meetings. So we were able to hit the ground running and start meeting with Foster Farms and some of these bigger entities and it was nice to be able to sit back and let him talk because I really don't like to talk, believe it or not, you know, really? um, yeah, yeah, believe it or not, I don't like to talk. I like to just work, you know, right. and so it's nice, like he could handle the conversation, diplomat, politically correct, you know, it's just nice to sit back and go, okay, I don't have to worry about this anymore. I can go push catalysts, right. you know what I mean? And that's kind of what has transcended over the last couple of years i know he thinks he probably i probably abandoned him but you know i'm no, like no, now i'm no. i'm still around just i don't have to worry about it no more right. you know i know somebody's in the driver's seat that gets what the bigger picture is so that's that's been nice so i appreciate all the things you've done that's that's allowed us to do what you're seeing now yeah well yeah. i we work together well i mean you know where you want to go and i know how to get there right and uh we, we work together nice i just want to get a copy of this video so i can pay it back to my board <laughs> yeah <laughs> no not really but uh and we're gonna push and enjoy working with you and it's with both y'all because y'all bring a new perspective to this area you know um it and it's very nice it's very nice and uh, i appreciate the opportunity to come over here today and and to share our vision of what we think uh, uh, Union Parish Chamber of Commerce ought to be doing. Yeah, you know? right. And 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 the chamber was a sponsor of Catalyst last year. We were able to do some stuff together, do some videos, and we're now in the process of trying to locate a, another facility that we can operate out of a Union because we know another link, as we call the show, but also the chamber is another link that we can link together to help businesses because. Our contacts are throughout the state as well. And so your regional mindset and our regional mindset has really, you know, enabled us to bring home resources that Union Parish normally did not have. Absolutely. You know, and that's, I think, been the biggest change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's all good. I <laughs> mean, you know, uh, because I, what you and I have discussed of, of um, working towards exactly what I think that Union Parish and North Louisiana needs i sit on the board of lacy which is the louisiana chamber of commerce executives and it's all about south louisiana south of i-10 and when i got on the board i started bringing them this way you know there were some some large chambers in north louisiana that weren't members you know and so i've been working on bringing there are 70 chambers in louisiana by the way and there are some chambers, as I said, in North Louisiana that's not even members. Right. They were in that island that, that we were in. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that what we're talking about doing uh, and with training sessions, um, I think that we'll really draw attention uh, not only to prospects but to other chambers to look and see what we do and say, you know, we, we ought to be doing that ourselves. And, and that's what I'm, we hope, uh, our collaboration effort with the Union Parish Chamber for Small Business September is what we're going to call it, to have these workshops to give chamber members additional value and benefits because we always know that. So what does a chamber do for me? And, and some of that's valid, right? There are communities when you find yourself siloed and you're not really helping your, your membership, then you get those valid questions. But it's been nice to be, like, say, in Union, where we're being progressive. I I don't remember a time, you know, there was a time, I remember a time when we worried about budget. Mm. I haven't had to worry about budget in the last, you know, what, four years or, you know, however long it's been, like, you know. In the black. Yeah, yeah I mean, every, every month I'm like, yeah, okay, we're good, you know. And so, and I think it's because we've opened our mindset. And so this new series collaboration with, you know, Louisiana Catalyst, Chamber of Commerce, bringing in vc from louisiana small business development center mm -hmm. bringing in you know i'm hoping kevin uh, with the, the workforce alliance group and and really bringing resources to our members and say hey these are the things you need to know if there is a recession coming or we're in one now whatever we want to say 
here's the things that can help you get through and the mentorship and someone to call when you do have a problem. Right. You know? Absolutely. So absolutely. I'm, I'm thankful for that, and I'm looking forward to it. I know me and Jerome both are oh, certainly. excited about it. Certainly. And, yeah. and, and to, to add more, uh, I guess, in-depthness about your regional mindset, we just had a regional chamber event. Tell us about your uh, involvement there and what was your takeaways from that regional event? We, we, um, there was a Delta Community College, um, and um, there were some great speakers, state and, um, and national speakers. Uh, Congress lady Ludlow, she was dynamic, you know, and she, if you go back a little bit, her husband actually got elected and he died from COVID. And then she, I don't know, was placed in this position or was elected. To she, was she was a lady right for the of the period. She was inspired. And, and I'm telling you, she, uh, she was very emotional about a passionate is a better word, I guess, about what she is of interest to her. And she thinks the interest to the, to the state. Um, there is an economic development board that I sit on, which covers, it's called NALEA, which is Northeast Louisiana Economic Alliance, which covers 10 parishes in the northeast corner of Louisiana, which includes Union to, to the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the 10 poorest parishes mm -hmm. in the state. And so um, we're working on bringing businesses not just to union parish i mean i don't forget about where i came from but to those other parishes too and and congress lady ludlow covers that area so i had a long conversation with her after the meeting about what who we were what we were doing and and we needed her help and you know so uh but uh we had the, the secretary of agriculture um uh, was there uh Mike Strain. Uh -huh. uh, we also had uh, Don Pearson, who is the Secretary of uh, Economic Development. Uh -huh. And uh, so they were really good speakers. I've known Don for 30 years. I used to be a, a state commissioner in another life. Uh -huh. And so I've known him for 30 years. So it really helps to be able to approach these people and talk to them about what your ideas are, what your needs are. And they know you, and they know where you're coming from. That really mm -hmm. helps me, you know. So I, I thought it was great. It was very well attended. Um, the mayors were there. Um, chambers of Commerce were there. State officials were there. Um, the college presidents were there. Chancellors were all there. So it was very well represented. Uh, and the Monroe uh, and West Monroe Chambers of Commerce put it on. Mm -hmm. They did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you, th when, you, when you think about those uh, entities, influencers, leaders in that room talking about uh, economic development, talking about workforce, talking about small business and infrastructure that we need, uh, what a great room that had to be. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, and, and basically it was repeated several times is this, this group of people has to work together. Mm -hmm. This is the people right here that will affect change. And uh, uh, and it was repeated, you know, yeah. by several speakers, and so that's true. It and and in the breaks and after the meetings over with, you didn't see people run for the door. Right. You know, they stood and talked and and networked with each other about what's going on with you and how can we help each other. And uh, that to me is the the end game of that whole meeting. Yeah. You know, to do that. Yeah. But we still have our own position okay. our own chambers or a state position we still have to function independently but we can work together we have been talking about multiple chambers working together regionally and this was the first this was the first event that multiple chambers actually worked together yeah and, and that's what we believe here at Catalyst is that networking collaboration and i like what you kind of even uh, all but said that meeting after the meeting. We all know that that meeting after the meeting is where the real action is. Yeah. That's yeah. where the real conversation. We appreciate that high level, but let me get you aside and really establish relationship okay. with you and really develop that link, which at Catalyst, obviously the name of the show, it, the link is so important yeah. that we connect Union Chamber to West Monroe Chamber uh, to Richland Chamber to 
Louisiana Delta community to to take to grant. It takes all of these oh, yeah. entities oh, yeah. uh, uh, to come together. The linking to get the catalyst has to be a part of that. Small Business Development Center, LED has to be a part of that. SBA has to be a part of that to really to your fort effect yeah. that change. Absolutely. Yeah. And when they do that, you'll see results. Mm -hmm. You'll see the change happening. It doesn't. It doesn't happen quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, we get very frustrated sometimes, and that. It, it's just not happening. You know, I, I have this great vision, but nobody else has it but me. But you work on it. That's right. You work on it. And if you bring sound reasoning, you know, it, it people will stop and listen to you. Yeah. Gro growth is gradual, and it takes time. And so that's one of the things we all have to keep in perspective is growth mm -hmm. is gradual. Yeah. yeah. I think we all forget what the, you know, sometimes we forget, we, we concentrate on our own piece of the puzzle versus what the actual puzzle is. Right. And, you know, and, and so that vision of the whole puzzle is important, but each piece has to be defined very fine, grad, you know, get down to a granular level of, okay, what does this one piece, what does it do? You know, for Union Parish, what does Union Parish do for North Louisiana? What yeah. are we? We're not going to be the big employer of the region. It could happen. But right now in this in the in the economic state we are, we're probably more of a tourist draw, mm -hmm. right? So play to those strengths doesn't mean you stop looking for other opportunities. Mm -hmm. But knowing our our boundaries and what what piece we really play helps us strengthen what we already do well. And then uh, you think about right now, you know, being in Farmville, how many people go to Pecanland Mall? Mm -hmm. Well, I went through there yesterday, <laughs> and it is a ghost town. Oh man. You know, I, that's the first time in years I had been through wow. that. But I, when I was out at Delta Community College, mm -hmm. um, uh, and after it was over, I headed to the interstate, and I just cut through Pecan Man Mall. Oh, there were a lot of empty. Well, the, the mall, the the retail world's changing and because of the online, yeah. but still, and from that meeting, it is still the largest tax generating revenue place in Washita Parish. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I guess my point man, is. We don't think about being informed of that that's so far away. You know, so you think about, you know, Rustin with the movie theater or something of that nature. When well, you're in a, a town away, it's not that far. You know, so it's not this whole nother world. So I guess that regional mindset is what we got to stay to to really build a stronger region so that we all benefit. Right. And, you know, there, there is a, a report that's available. It's called a leakage report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it basically tells you where people are going outside of your area to buy something like automobiles uh, we have two car dealerships in formal but there are more people going outside of union parish to buy vehicles than buying them locally uh, and so you can look at this leakage report and you can see where your shortcomings are you just all you got to do is just look at it. so that's something that everyone uh, even business-wise if you're thinking about going to a certain business you look at the leakage report and if there is an abundance of sales in your area already for that product. It may not be a good idea for you to go into that mm -hmm. business. Right. But if there's a need, you see it, then you want to fill that need. Yeah, we don't talk about utilizing those reports you know, to take an existing business and have them just add a line or add a product line to, to capture that market. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's the easiest way to, to create growth. Yeah. You know, instead of like, say, just, I'm going to start a business. Let me go in and do what everyone else I does. love to cook, so yeah. I have to do your yeah. right. yeah. yeah. But uh, Louisiana, Louisiana Economic Development has all kind of resources available to help businesses um, identify the needs, but also to find sources for uh, funding for them also. Right. So LED is a great resource. Mm -hmm. um, at, at, uh, so there, there is one thing I want to share with a project that we're working on that is really becoming near and dear to me is we two years ago started on a project that the act we all are familiar with the college entrance exam with act well ac ticket which is a national organization <clears throat> but they also have a program for children or adults that don't plan to go to college so they have and it's called um, work keys or you know becoming work ready so if you don't have a resume, as kids to say get out of high school, don't go to college, they don't have a resume, or somebody that once started college and partied for a year and flunked out and daddy says, now go get you a job, they don't have a resume. 
So this ACT, the Work Keys program, actually trains you and tests you on things like everyday math, problem solving skills, communication skills. And you take a test and you could be, receive a certificate that you, and instead of A, B, C, D uh, testing, it's, it's kind of like Affordable Care Act. It's metals, you know, it's, it's bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Mm-hmm. But our job was to educate employers the significance of this certificate. And so we've qualified for that. We had two years to do it. We did it in six months. And so now I said, okay, let's, let's decide where we're we going from here. We've got everybody that's getting certified. Where are they going to get the jobs? And I really got to concentrating on the detention center. Uh, in Union Parish, we have a detention center that has over 300 prisoners. And when they get out, the hardest thing for them to do is to get a job. And if they don't get a job, they could very well end up right back where they started. Right. So I went and talked to the warden. I said, look, let me tell you what we've been working on. But it was all about kids getting out of high school, fucking out of college, or trying to upgrade their job skills. We had never talked about those people that are restricted until a certain point, like if they're in a detention center. So he has wholeheartedly supported the program to where it would take the the prisoners that are qualified for work release to where they they can leave the detention center and go to work. Um, And so what we're working on right now is to do this training and testing for the work release prisoners. So when they get out of the prison, they can go and say, look, I've, I've been in the detention center two years, but I wasn't sitting on my butt. I was studying. I was trying to improve myself. Because not everybody in the prison is a bad person. They just made some bad choices. Right. And so we are getting way down the road to doing this that they can go to Foster Farms or some retailer uh, 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 manufacturing and say, look, I wasn't sitting down. I've got this certification. Here, I know how to solve problems. I know how to talk, you know, and they are, it's proven they are much more apt to hire them than a person that hasn't done anything to improve themselves. So that's something that I'm really excited about. And we started on it two years ago and COVID hit and the head of work release program for the state shut it down Mm -hmm. because of COVID. So we had to wait a year, year and a half or whatever there was, and now we're ramping it back up. We're also, but we've got another lady, Kirsten, who you have met, is she's going to deal with the the psychological problems or maybe there was abuse at home, maybe there's, there's drug problems, whatever, and she's going to address those issues. So I think that we're going to really affect change in – these people that are getting out of incarceration and I am and I think that every detention center in the state of Louisiana or nationwide ought to look at what we're doing yeah right yeah so. yeah those adverse experiences and traumatic experiences that people grow up with end up making bad decisions after going to a detention center being rehabilitated they do deserve another chance oh yes absolutely uh, just because I hadn't served time doesn't mean that I've always been perfect, but yet I'm still afforded opportunities to grow and be made better and go through professional development and online trainings and so yeah. forth. So, yeah. yeah. No, but you got some help in doing that. You can't do it on your own. That's right. You know, you're not that's strong right. enough that's right. to do it on your own. So yeah. that's something that we we really, uh, I think, is going to be a great project. And to prove that we're on the right path, the, the federal government just signed a contract with ACT. Mm-hmm to provide exactly the same services to the federal prison. Right. Hmm. But we were ahead of them. Yes, and so I contacted them and I said, can we get some of that money? It was millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Can we get some of that money? Or is it, no, you're not a federal prison. You're a state entity. So, But we're, it proved to me that we, we're on the right to right there. Right. When Chambers of Commerce can start looking at economic development beyond, uh, you know, entrepreneurship and starting business, but look at that wellness of the human of all of our citizens, of our entrepreneurs, then we'll begin to see even more change and growth happen as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and you don't know where that new business is going to come from. Exactly. You know, you may have a passion for something, 
that no one else has thought about, you know, and it just, it, it, it just happens. As I said, you juggle about 10 balls, things, possibilities, and, and periodically they fall and you capture them. Right. But business cannot exist without a workforce mm -hmm. and a workforce cannot exist without quality of life. That's right. So that's all, they're, they're all right. tied. You know, that's, that's changed. That dynamic has changed in the last 10 years or 20 years. You know, it, it used to be, you know, strictly the pay, uh, I may have to move to go somewhere I don't want to, but I can make another 50 cents an hour. Now they're asking about, you know, what's the quality of life, right. and, you know, uh, and uh, they're willing to drive. That's the other thing now that people are moving to Lake Darbonne that are working in Ruston or Monroe, not necessarily in Formable. And, and right now, the average of a house being on the market on the lake at Lake Narbonne is one week. It's one week. Mm -hmm. It's hot market. Yeah. Well, well, John, man, as always, we thank you, man. We thank you for your conversation, relationships, and what you're doing, not just for Union Parish, uh, but for this region and state as, w as well. And even being a model for some of those federal dollars that you just talked about as well, man. So we thank you. Hey, man, I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, if I can help you expand your reach, uh, I'd be honored. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you. No doubt. Good. Thank you all for tuning in for another edition of The Link.